Hi, I just finished the beta version of this document builder using Power Tools and SnapPoint. I thought it's cool, so I'll do a quick video on this function. And if with enough interest from the community, I may be able to do the in-depth looking at the moving piece that make up this application. Let's take a look at the overview. We have a Power Apps form. We have a SnapPoint custom list that take data from the Power Apps form. We have a Power Automate overflow that listening to changes or creations of records in SnapPoint list, and then go to a document library, take the template that we have out there and populate that template with the data coming from Power Apps form and then save it to a new file. Let's take a look at the application. This is the Power App form. I'm fairly new to Power App and so my design is very primitive. But for this demo, you can see the form block because we need to initiate new entry. Now the form name is new form, status is pending submission. The form will remain locked because we need to select the agreement type. Let's select one. The PI name will be default to the current user. However, it can be modified. The data field here is is specific to agreement one. If we change to agreement two, it will be the agreement two specific data. I have completed the entry of this form, but before I submit, I'll show you where the data will be submitted to. This is the cell point list that will receive the data. As you see, it has all the possible view that all the templates are using. I will go in depth of what this flow trigger means, but for now, we do observe. This is the document agreement template. Inside this template folder are the number of templates that we'll be using. As you can see from the form, we have two templates. The agreement one, this is where the data will be fed to. Should that be agreement one selection or the agreement two with specific agreement two data? Let's proceed with the submission. As you see, a name has been assigned, agreement two and date and time stamp. The status is submitted, all few are locked, and we can initiate new submission so we need to. Let's check the list, give it a refresh. Agreement 2, because we selected Agreement 2, only data fields Agreement 2 contain data. And take a look at flow trigger equal yes. Let's refresh the browser again and see this change on its own. You will see here it has updated on its own from yes to no. Take a look at the uh, document library. You will see here a document has been created and it contains the data field exactly as we enter from the Power App form. Here is the email notification sent to the submitter using flow sent an email version 2 agreement 2 template created and this is the link that will allow me to download a copy of the template that has been created i intentionally not allow user to click and open the template using online word because i would like to preserve the integrity of the original generated file here is the document that i downloaded from the link on the email it has all the data value that we enter through the power apps form if we go to the document info area and expand the so all property you will see how it was assigned by flow using the data from the set point list to the document. Let's take a look at what you need for the application to work. First, the set point list. This is the custom list that has all the data field for all templates used. I use the leading characters TD as for template data to differentiate the similar field on the document library ones. Next, the document library with the similar field name, but I have the D as document as a leading character so that I can properly assign. It would be confusing if you have the two lists have the same exact name. When you select, there's a good chance that you select the from and the to in error. And of course, the template that you need for flow to copy from to generate a new document and the Power App form. Remember, each library by default has a self point form. However, it's not very nice looking. You can customize using Power Apps directly. The reason why I chose not to do so because whatever I build will be stuck with that list versus this form I build as a standalone. And so if I need to replicate this, it will be easier for me. Let's talk about the flow triggered variable that I have on the cell point list and controlled by the Power Apps form. When we have a flow that listening to a cell point list for a created or modified item and trigger when that happens, when we do that, we have no control over when flow is triggered, especially on the modify side of things. There are cases where you need to make a change to a record without the need for flow to fire. We need an extra indicator to aid with this process. And that's when I submit on the Power App form, I set the flow trigger to yes. And in the flow, I put the condition only run when the flow trigger is yes, because that is 
intestinal then go ahead carry on and do all this thing and this is another step down here that i did not do a screenshot is to update that variable after completing all the steps here to change it to no so next time when i modify that record and i save it flow will not trigger again unless i want it to by setting the flow trigger to yes so there is a control factor here that i want to have on when flow is triggered i hope that makes sense Hope you liked uh, what you see. And if I have about 20 to 30 uh, folks interest in seeing this in detail, I will do uh, a few more videos uh, in depth of this. Bye now.